One milestone event takes place just two weeks after conception, when the blastocyst is about the size of a poppy seed. This is the moment when the cells start to organize themselves into an embryo. The process is called gastrulation. With animals like frogs, whose embryos develop inside transparent eggs, it's easy to see it in action. After the egg becomes a hollow ball of many cells, some cells dive into the center, forming layers, which will go on to develop into different organs. In humans, gastrulation happens deep inside the mother's uterine lining, so it can't be photographed. But we think it works something like this. The blastocyst creates two oblong bubbles, one on top of the other. Sandwiched between them is a thin layer of cells. These are the cells which one day may become a baby. At the beginning of gastrulation, some cells begin moving toward the center. Then they dive downwards, creating a new lower layer. More cells plunge through, squeezing in between, forming a third. The cells in the three layers may not look different, but for each layer, a very different future lies ahead. The lower cells are destined to form structures like the lungs, liver, and the lining of the digestive tract. The middle layer will form the heart, muscles, bones and blood. And the top layer will create the nervous system, including the spinal cord and the brain, as well as an outer covering of skin and eventually hair. This is a human embryo three weeks after fertilization. Less than a tenth of an inch long, its neural tube, the beginning of the nervous system, is already in place. A couple of days later, the top of the tube is bulging outwards on its way to becoming a brain. With the primitive brain cells exposed, we can see some are sending feelers, making connections to their neighbors. As the days pass, changes proceed at a rapid-fire pace throughout the embryo. Everywhere, cells are multiplying, and they're on the move. Some reach out to one another, forming blood vessels. A heart begins to beat. As the embryo lengthens, the precursor to the backbone forms. Groups of cells bulge out on the sides, the beginnings of arms and legs. This is the embryo four and a half weeks after fertilization. It is only about a fifth of an inch long. The primitive backbone now curls into a tail, which will disappear in a few weeks. A large brain is developing, and on the side of the head, an eye. How does this happen? How does the embryo transform itself from a blob of cells into different tissues and organs, and finally into a fully functional baby? The secret, of course, lies in your genes, in your DNA. Inside most every cell in your body, you have the same 46 chromosomes carrying the same genes. But not all the cells in your body are the same. Nerve cells, blood cells, cells lining your intestine, they all look different and they do different jobs. 
That's because in each of these cells, different groups of genes are turned on. And when a gene is turned on, it tells the cell to construct a particular protein. Proteins are the molecules that build your body, like collagen, a fiber that makes up much of your skin, tendons, and bones. Or keratin in your hair. Crystalline is the protein that helps make the lens of your eye clear. Some proteins do work. Actin and myosin move muscle fibers. Hemoglobin in the blood carries oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. So when the embryo is developing, how does a cell turn on the right set of genes and create the right proteins? Part of the answer seems to be location. Once the basic body plan is established with the head on one end, back and front, and left and right sides, cells seem to know exactly where they are and what they are supposed to become. This is because cells talk to each other in the form of chemical messages. Chemicals in one cell can trigger a reaction in the cell next door that can spread to the cell's nucleus and turn genes on or off. But what's really going on in there? How does a gene get turned on? If all the DNA in a single cell were stretched out, it would be about six feet long but it's all wound up very tightly, coiled around balls of protein. For a gene to be turned on, something has to come in and loosen up the right section. Then the cell's machinery can latch on and read the DNA, the first step on the long road to building a protein. Those molecules that can turn genes on play a key role in every aspect of development, including the process that transforms the embryo into a boy or a girl. We didn't want to know. We wanted to do it, I guess, the old-fashioned way. Well, you kind of wanted to know.